The Logitech G910 is a great starting point for Logitech's pro gaming mechanical keyboards. So there's room for improvements, you say, geek? Well, wait and you shall see. So I may be far from the first person to review this keyboard, but as the market for LED mechanical keyboards hasn't actually expanded that much anyway, I still feel that this review is relevant as much as the keyboard is still relevant in the market. This keyboard came to life when Mummy Logitech got with Daddy Omron to create what is called the Roma G switches. Now these switches are unlike any other switches I have ever dealt with or felt before. Now I'm used to Cherry Mix Brown switches on my Razer keyboard and they have this bottoming out feeling when you get to the bottom and a quite a nice tactile feel. This keyboard doesn't quite have that. Now don't get me wrong, it's not mushy, but there is this sudden drop of the key when it starts to ease in very slowly and then reaches the bottom point, uh, which may be weird to a lot of you who haven't used the keyboard before. However, it is claimed to be the most accurate and fastest switches ever made, and I, I think I believe them. You just might need to get used to the feeling at first. Talking about the feel, let's discuss the keycaps. Okay, so these are a little odd too. I don't know if you're sensing a pattern here, but uh, they must have been designed in some sort of scientific lab. That's all I can really explain because these are definitely different and going in their own direction. Now, uh, these are supposedly supposed to keep your finger in the center of the key, but what I can't get over is the difference in some of the lettering keys, whereas some have an open top and some don't. Also, this trend follows through to some other weird decisions, such as the Windows key having a concave top, and Shift, Tab, and the Caps Locks button, to name a few, have a flat feel. I don't understand why this is, but it may feel a little odd to you. Also, what might cause some issue for some people who don't lift their fingers up that much when typing, there is quite a height difference between some of the keys, especially coming from different levels. Um, you may catch your finger on them. Some people have been complaining about this. It's not been a big problem for me. However, I thought I'd mention it, so take it with a pinch of salt. While we're talking negative, let's go through some other things as well, which must be defects to my keyboard, but I'm not too sure. The caps lock light is intermittent, the num lock light is intermittent, and the scroll lock light is intermittent. The, the num lock light, I never know if it's on the caps, I'm guessing most of the time. This is not really that great. Also, the media keys, they aren't the best in the world. I wish they'd put those on run switches or hope that they put those on-run switches on those as well, as unless you hit them on their actual point of the key where they actually register it, which is, for instance, on the play button to the left of the key, they intermittently actually make that point of contact. So uh, sometimes songs don't get played, sometimes I'm mashing the key to skip to the next track. It just really doesn't seem good enough when the rest of the keyboard, especially in terms of keys, was going so well. Okay, okay, talking positives now, and there's quite a few, so let's get through them. The first one being the media keys. There's actually quite an abundance of them with all the options that you'd ever need, uh, including a special gaming mode, which disables the Windows key, so you don't hit that when you're doing your precious League of Legends tournaments. Also, there is a nice volume uh, bar, which is very nice to, to use, actually, and it's something that all keyboards should really feature. There's also an abundance of macro keys, pretty much more than you could ever need, and if you did need more than the nine, there is also a pages button to expand that even further. So, so I think all of you will be very happy with that. And finally, there is something which I've never seen in the keyboard before, and all of them should include this as well, and that is the Arc Stock. The Arc Stock is a location for you to put your phone in and paired with the app. You can watch all your computer usage, uh, resources stuff, change uh, gaming specific uh, settings on the fly, and you can also do some other cool little customization stuff as well. So it's awesome really that the arc stock is there and definitely saves you from about a 20 pound additional add-on that you'd have to pay if you did want an extra phone dock on your desk. I have to mention the lighting on this keyboard is quite a big feature after all and quite simply well done Logitech you've really nicely implemented it the lighting is very nicely dispersed around the keyboard very well lit no dark spots it's all even exactly what I like to see now this has been achieved because of the partnership with Omron they've managed to put the lighting into the core of the key, something which you can't do with cherry keys as the, you can't change the design of them in any way, shape or form. So the LEDs have to be applied to the exterior of the physical switch. So 
that means the lighting isn't always the best. So well done on that one. Uh, you can uh, change the settings of the lights very easily using the software. It's the easiest software I have ever seen and used. So uh, definitely something that uh, the other manufacturers, <clears throat> Razer, might need to pick up on. And uh, you can actually set custom modes and change it however you want it to whatever color you want in the RGB spectrum. And there's some cool little special effects if you like starry effects or uh, effect that uh, shows up the light on the key as you press it, which is very nice. And a mention that has to be in there somewhere, if you are a GTA 5 player, there are actually custom light stuff for GTA 5. Uh, if you're in a police chase, the F keys will go red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And if you're playing different characters, the lights will change accordingly and different missions will affect that as well. Very nice, obviously not a Logitech only thing. I'm sure any mechanical keyboard with LEDs in them will have the same feature, I assume. Uh, also, talking about gaming stuff, uh, they have a very nice feature which will highlight the keys that are binded in games uh, so you can see all the keys that are available and in use on any particular game you play. Very nice feature. Oh, and quickly about the unboxing experience, I wouldn't normally mention this sort of thing, but it was a very nice unboxing experience, something I actually wasn't expecting. It comes in a very nice G-labeled box, as you can see to the left of me here, and uh, also they provide an extra wrist rest, which you can switch out on the bottom of the keyboard. The only thing I will give them minus points for is why they didn't do a full width along the whole length of the wrist bar as an option to switch that out to, because if you are going to do a lot of typing on the keyboard, not just gaming, having full width on one side is no use. Why should one hand have the benefit of having the full rest and the other one should be punished? I don't know. Maybe it's a thing against right, right hands. I don't know. Maybe they get all the glory of the time. Don't want to write about that too much, but something that definitely needs a mention in there. Logitech, please next time include that. So this draws the review to a close. There are some really strong points which have come from the clever partnership that Logitech have made with Omron, which I hope which will make future versions of this series a real success. And that's something that I really want to hone a point on. This keyboard has a fantastic amount of potential and this partnership will hopefully make future iterations a real, real big success for them. However, I don't feel that this is that one, but that's it for the review. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button. Subscribe for future videos. As, as this RAM suggests here, I have a future build video coming up with someone who's bought a build from my computer building service. Uh, if you want to know more information about that, check the description where I'll list a computer building service I do where you guys can pay for me personally to build your computer, possibly even on camera. And uh, you can get the dream build you've always wanted at a really good price. And you don't have to run the risk of doing it yourself, especially if you're someone who's not particularly techy or knows a lot about building computers. But with that said, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.